Good afternoon. Uh, today we are at this historical city of Antwerp uh, near Brussels uh, for the Horasis Global India Business Meet 2012. And uh, uh, what could be a better occasion to talk about India and, and the strides of Indian companies in terms of merger and acquisition as they aspire to go global? I have with me today two very uh, relevant people in this domain. Uh, Vinod Juneja, he is the Managing Director of the Binani Group of Industry, and Gunjan Sena, who is the Chairperson of the company called Metric Stream from the United States. They are world leaders in governance, risk, and compliance. Welcome, and thank you for giving me time for this. Uh, Mr. Juneja, I'll ask you this first question. Yeah, uh, you know, there is a lot of buzz about Indian companies going global and, you know, acquiring acquisitions. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And I, I believe your company recently acquired uh, some, you had some acquisitions in Europe. If you could tell us uh, what you did, and if you could tell us some of the things that you looked into, then I'll ask Gunjan Sinha uh, what he believes uh, are the relevant issues pertaining to the risks and governance around such acquisitions. So first to you, uh, something about the acquisition that you recently did. We have done recently one a major acquisition very near to Brussels. It is called Batik, which is about 40 kilometers from the site where we are all sitting. And Indians or Indian companies, for us, for, we were basically in zinc, glass fiber, and cement, banana cement. You know, Vitaab Bachchan is one of the famous brand ambassadors for us. In India, you know, M&A is always a difficult proposition. For reason, for the two, I will come. Number one, there is a no Indian banks are available to finance this sort of a acquisition. Because whenever you take an acquisition, it is basically called a takeover finance. And takeover finance, per se, Indian banks are not accustomed to take this sort of a risk. One. Number two important thing is then any acquisition as a promoter, you can put 20, 30 percent, then 70 percent of the funds you have to rely on the either a debt or a equity or a P fund. So that is the one, the most difficult pass for m and that is the lack of taking appetite for Indian banks, whether it is a public sector banks or export import Bank of India, they were not in tune because the moment they ask you to, they will lend you money, they will ask you to pledge your Indian assets, they ask you to give the personal guarantees, which is nowhere the way how you take the m and worldwide. Now I'm coming to your very specific question of where we are historic city. We are sitting near to Brussels. We have done this detailed acquisition of a Owen Corning company called B2. This was the one of the main European center for the Owen Corning and St. Gobas. They have sold these companies to a P fund in 2007-8, and now 2012 we have done this major acquisition. Company has got a plant in Brussels, plant in Norway, and upcoming plant in Tunisia. So these are the few things which we have done. I think it is a good thing. Inshallah, we'll see how the things will move. But we have got a good experience of running the cement pl a plant in China, which is about 150 kilometers from Rejau port. And it is a, where the 75 percent equities of Benani Group, 25 percent of a local Chinese partner. So far, we have got the last three years plant is there. It is in almost full capacity. We are going to expand the China plant. Things are seems to be okay. We have got a Dubai, about 10 years old cement plant. It was one of the best running capacity, but you know, will the meltdown of the Dubai economy or the Middle East, what you say, after those war and such certain things. Things are seems to be a difficult in Dubai for time being, especially you all are aware in the real estate sector. Our upcoming plant is in Mauritius which will be the first cement plant in the Mauritius. So far, all their requirement, they are depending on 100% import from Lafarge or Wholesome and other, but first Indian companies who's trying to settle the plant there. And these are the things I think 
again coming to your basic question you see in the indian scenario today md is little hard and difficult because of the channels are not available to fund you to give you the equity and debt what you require to acquire but only i will say that indian entrepreneur is very much prepared and eagerness to see how to go about in the foreign acquisition thank you mr tunisia thank you for sharing all the details with us and uh, so this leads us to the other question that i have for gunjan that while he shared details of his particular acquisition but in context to the larger picture when how do you see such acquisitions the kind of challenges the change of uh, mitigative things that can happen and would you like to share some of the thought sure. process on that thank you yeah firstly you know i have to commend you for you know the bold step uh, that your group uh, has done here the bilani group in terms of your acquisition here in europe and i think you rightly point out uh, mr juneja in terms of what the fundamental issues are for indian companies who are aspiring to globalize themselves and not having the real understanding of how the capital can be raised for that is is a real real challenge and issue and uh, being the chairman of metric stream which is one of the world leaders in governance risk management and compliance we are a software company but we worked with number of multinational companies who are looking at risk and looking at it both in organic form but also in terms of context of mergers and acquisitions and what i fundamentally believe that indian companies in the future have to migrate from looking at the mna as a best practice looking at mna as how do you think about risk management and to be able to communicate that risk management to the financial institutions both domestically in india but also internationally in europe as well as in wall street or or rest of the world because that communication of how risk ought to be perceived post acquisition is very very important because that's what gives them the comfort where they can go, go ahead and give you the financing required and not need the kinds of uh, you know things which you mentioned in terms of personal guarantees or or uh, you know ridiculous terms and so forth if you think about it most of the time entrepreneurs are bold to make the mna decisions and they're focused on the opportunity side of the equation which is what should be the case but fundamentally 9 out of the 10 acquisitions fail because you haven't really thought about the downside the risk side it could be coming because of either cultural issues or hr related it could happen because of lack of system integrations between the two companies on how you operate or not really understanding what kind of volatility might emerge because of demand or supply gaps which might exist and the lack of understanding thereof it's hard to run your own business in the first place and now you take on another entity while the promise can be good the risk management has to be paid due attention to having worked with you know hundreds of corporations around the world my perspective is that as indian companies and as moves that you have made personally here as we graduate to a more sophisticated level of risk management around mna you will realize that a will have better availability of capital mm -hmm. and b you will actually make more of these mna successful in a true sense so that the ratio is not 9 out of the 10 but you know more often you are actually able to make these mna's work cross culturally in a global setting a lot of good points gunjan i think uh, and uh, that uh, uh, eggs me on to the next question i was going to ask mr juneja that uh, since he mentioned about the various other aspects that are involved in uh, mergers and acquisitions since you've taken up a few companies outside of india uh, are you in terms of personnel i mean are you moving in some key people and in how do you see the blending of uh, the human work capital blend because as as he says one of the risk factors apart from the financials and technology could be also the management part of it because you know cultures are different so how do you become global and yet be local to that market so uh, what plans you have to make sure that you know this is a more seamless effective successful acquisition in the next coming years if you could share some of that you see i entirely agree with gunjan and yourself that hr is the one of the blending of the indian culture and the local culture and the local working is very critical for the working 
we as a company, as a promoters and also the Indian experience, do believe for time being, let us not disturb the local culture and the local understanding how the things are going on. So for the moment, we are not taking too much because the immediate force, you know, all these, you must understand and as you are all aware that Europe is also very highly unionized. It is not India or a CPM or communist are there. Here also the trade unions are very strong. They have got their own uh, very fundamentals. So we have to talk to those people. We have to tell them. We have to give them experience that we are not going to bring all the people from India or we are not doing the body shopping here by bringing. We are going to retain you. We are going to work it out. You know, one of the, as Gunjan was telling, one of the major risks for pension, retrenchment, these are the one of the major issues. If you start doing, you require another few billions of dollars to settle those issues which are very sensitive. And the other issue is, is which we are uh, talking is of corporate governance. We are absolutely clear. We are just inducted from of our people in the board. The major board of these yeah. companies are as it is. We are not disturbing the board. We are not disturbing the top management. Yes, but one should not forget that we are not a P fund whose job is only to invest in it. We are a manufacturing company. We are a real hard people who has to work. This company was owned for any company which is owned by P fund. Their attitude is a different. But we are a management. We are a manufacturing company. So naturally we wanted to bring a good technology. And of course we have to see the cost cutting. We have to see the profitability of the company because we have got certain commitments out of the profits of this company. Thank you, Mr. Juneja. I have one more question for you, Gunjan, and that is now that we see a fair amount of activity by Indian companies and in, who aspire to go global, and there are a lot of merger and acquisitions on the, on the plate. So uh, your company being in the GRC space, do you see yourself being more active in the Asian, pan-Asian markets? Uh, have you taken positions? Or, or it's equal between the European and the North American continent, if you could just say something sure. about that. Sure. No, <clears throat> that's a good question. And, uh, you know, if you think about this whole notion of, you know, corporate governance, risk management, and compliance, you know, traditionally this uh, has emerged out of the, the U.S., you know, multinational companies, you know, in European multinational companies and so forth. But we are definitely beginning to see the desire of companies in India and as well as other parts of Asia who are now genuinely getting serious about it. Because I'll tell you why this has become very important now. You know, the days are over when you can actually think of yourself as just a supplier to a global multinational. Indian companies have to become true international brands in their own right if they want to succeed. Absolutely. And that is where you have to raise your corporate governance standards, you have to raise your risk management standards and to your regulatory compliance around the world in a manner that is true to your brand. And that is where stakeholders and shareholders and customers and employees are going to give you the due respect needed to drive the kind of profitability and, and market capitalization which you truly are capable of. So I think the Indian market, the Asian market is now ripe for it and we are actually seeing a lot of interest and demand working with a number of companies in India in different sectors from beverages to, you know, to financial services to infrastructure. Companies are coming to us, which is quite a change now over the last uh, couple of years. Well, thank you, Gunjan. I, I, I was guessing that this could be the answer. Uh, one very, very last, very short question is, but do you think sometimes, I mean, this is my perception, that a lot of Indian companies, while they're going global, there still is some sense of delays and or they're a little averse to adopting some of these uh, very current global practices. Uh, and I think at some level it hurts them yes. sooner or later. Yes. Because uh, as you s rightly said, we are part of the global network. And you know, it, whether it's India or Germany or Europe, we're all supplying to the same ecosystem. And transparency, compliance has to be global. And, uh, and since India is on a high growth curve, I would expect and I would have guessed that there would be far more activity than what I see today. So is it true that there is still a little bit of 
averse approach to this or they are op with open arms taking this? Yeah. No, I, I think, you know, your observation is absolutely right. You know, traditionally, the issue has been that many Indian entrepreneurs and business houses were reasonably okay servicing global multinationals. Mm -hmm. And I think that psyche has begun to change for the first time, and I genuinely feel that, is where Indian entrepreneurs and Indian business houses are now saying that we can create the Samsung of India. We can create brands like Sony and Samsung out of India, which in the true right are going to be global multinational brands. And those are the entrepreneurs who are coming out and saying, I want no less than anyone else on the planet in terms of how I treat my brand. Because that's going to be the biggest asset, the promises that I make and the promises that I keep. We ought to be known for that worldwide. To me, that's the change which I've begun to see, which is very heartening in the context of the Indian economy. Well, that's a good note. I think uh, I would thank both of you for giving time uh, for this special panel on this topic. Uh, we move into uh, the mainstream Horasis Global India Business Meet. I'm sure in the next two days, or today, tonight, and tomorrow, a whole lot of discussion will happen around this subject. Thank you once again, thank Mr. Janeja. Thank you, thank Mr. Thank you very Sina. much. And uh, I'll turn back to you. <laughs>